Hey, yesterday I did a video on Elemental 3.9, the beta version, and the new loop builder that you can now use with WooCommerce. However, there was a little bit of a discrepancy. For some reason, when I was showing it, it wasn't showing all of the features that are available on the left-hand side, because I was having to scroll down quite a bit, and I want to correct myself on that. Now, of course, to use it, you do have to have the beta version of Elemental 3 and Elemental Pro 3.9. You got to go over to your WordPress, go over to Elemental Tools, go down to the version tab and enable the uh, beta tester over here. Once you've done that, go back up over here to where you have dashboard and click update. And then you want to ensure that Elements and Elemental Pro are both the beta version. I did have the beta version yesterday, but for some reason it didn't come through. I don't know if that was my system or what, but everything is fine now. And then you need to then go to Elemental again, go to the settings, go to experiments, and enable the Flexbox container and then scroll down and enable the loop as well. You can't do the loop without Flexbox container. For anyone that's worried about, well, I like to use section and columns. I'm not too sure about containers. I did a video earlier where it shows that you can use both of them simultaneously. Go and watch that. So uh, enable beta tester, get both versions. You know, they will download whatever update and then enable the uh, Flexbox container and the loop builder. Right, I've got a blank page over here. And the first thing we're gonna do is type in loop and drop in the loop grid. I mean, I could have added in a container, by the way, all right, and then dropped it in. I've just dropped it in straight away because it gives me the container anyway. Now, what I do here, you could do on any page, or you could go to your templates. You would say that you were gonna build a product archive you know, you would give it a name and then you would have a blank page and you'd basically kind of do exactly what I'm kind of doing here. The only difference though is that is when you are doing it as a template, you can set your display condition. So it might be for an entire shop, for your entire website, or you might set up a particular loop grid for a particular category. And I'll show you how you can define your categories in a moment. So when you add the loop grid in, you'll have a grid of three. You can modify this to be five, six, seven, Maybe not 100, but you can redefine it, but that will become clear and activated once you've built your grid. Uh, the first thing you wanna do is ensure that you have picked products. If you don't pick products, it's not really applying to your products, right? And you gotta make sure you got WooCommerce installed as well. Now down here, there is no template for me to pick because I haven't created any yet. If I had created a template here, or I had done it in my template builder, wherever I have, the next time I drop in a loop grid, it would allow me to pick that template. And I wanna make something clear here. Every time you build one of these, you're creating a template. So if I was to now create another one down here, let me just go here, let's pop in another loop grid. So I've got two loop grids. This will be a template, and this would be a template. So you can have as many templates as you want, but I would probably say don't overdo it, be very methodical with your building. Now to use the template, as I've already said, you are gonna have to start adding in features or widgets to basically make it work. We do have the option for query. We will come back onto this later on, but basically this is kind of like what you're gonna be used to in the products widget if you were using it with Elemental anyway where you get to select what items are gonna come through. And you could also say, right, I only wanna see items that are, I think I have a category called, there we go, hoodies. So I might say this template or this loop grid is only gonna to apply to the hoodies category or a particular type of item, which you might not do for just one item, but hey, you get the idea. So let's start building our item over here. Let's hit create template. You will be asked to hit save, just hit save and away you go. Now, these are the items in yesterday's video that were not appearing. For some reason, I was still getting the post widgets over here, but I've I've re-updated and everything is now working absolutely fine. We do have, there is one little thing though I will point out, which I'm pretty sure will get corrected very, very soon. If I was to drop in a featured image now, that is gonna bring over the featured image for your product. So make sure you have got an image for your product. If you don't have an image, you won't have an image. But here's the great thing. You don't have to show the image if you don't wanna show the image. Now down here, I've got lots of other items I can add. And here's the beauty about the loop grid, okay? If I, I mean, I'm okay, let me point out the issue I said I was gonna mention. If I go and pop the product title here, the product title is not visible. I'm gonna hit update for a moment, okay? I'm gonna go down to the settings down here in your bottom left. 
I'm going to say and give me a preview of a particular product. So let's go and pick one. Um, in fact, we won't go with that. Let's go with a hoodie. There we go, hoodie with logo. Let's hit apply and preview. That is now brought over a different image, obviously, but the title is still not displaying. And what you will find is that even though you go to style and you start to mess around with anything here, you know, the size, I mean, I could even go here and put in like, uh, no, we won't do that. We'll go with 1.4 and I hit update it still does not come through. And I'm pretty sure an update will come out to correct this because the same thing happened with the loop grid with the posts where the post title wasn't coming through. Now, if you are desperate for it and it's not coming through, all is not lost. All you've got to do is go down and get the heading. Let me just type it in here. Let's just pop the heading in over here. I'm going to get rid of the text. Uh, once you've done that, sorry, I closed it down. You'll see the stack or the dynamic tags or whatever you want to call it, the database symbol it looks like. I pick that and I'm going to scroll down until I get to product title. That is now the product title and it will loop all the way through. And obviously you can now just go ahead and do what I kind of was doing. You know, like you, could, you could do some styling on it. I'm not here to kind of overly go over the styling, but if the field is not there, like um, you can bring it over yourself. You could even use a custom field. I haven't got any custom fields loaded here, but instead of bringing over this, I could have, um, I mean, obviously I would get rid of the product title. I would go and pick like ACF or pods or something like that. And then I would ensure that I was picking the right one. Sorry, let me go back a step. You don't click the spanner wrench, all right? You would just pick it. And then once you pick the custom field, then you pick the spanner wrench and then you would pick your field. Um, but you do have lots of items down here. I mean, some of my favorite ones really are things like the product price, we can drop that in. You have full control over the margins, the paddings, the sizing of it, does it sit to the left or right? Um, you know, uh, you have so much more control than what you used to get with the normal products widget, which, was quite limited. Like you couldn't, you couldn't do something like this, could you? You couldn't like stick the image up there like that, or you couldn't do something like this. Let me just pop the price here. Let me give it a bit of a big typography, something like that. And now let me just adjust the top margin, give it a negative one. And look, I'm going to make it go like that. You couldn't do that before, right? Unless you're going to start messing around with CSS. And if you don't want to mess around with CSS, this makes it so much easier. This is also one of the reasons why people tended to use third party plugins. You know, like there's some quite common ones like Ellie Custom Skim and other stuff like that. In my opinion, you don't need any of them now. You can just jump in and start using this. Now, I'm not going to mess around with over styling this too much. I'm just going to get one more widget and I'm going to go for add to cart over here. I've just centralized that there. Again, you can stylize it however you want. So you could now basically do what you want. If you don't want an add to, uh, have an add to cart button, you could just go in and grab like any button you want really. And we'll just do something like this. I don't know, look, this looks really ugly, right? I'm really sorry. This is not the greatest um, example. I'm gonna leave the words as it is. And I'm just gonna go down here to link and um, I'm gonna go to dynamic tags. And I'm now just gonna pick post URL or I could scroll down and hit add to cart as well. So you could create your own add to cart button. Maybe you don't want to show, you know, the variations and all of that and the numbers. You just want to have straight add to cart. Well, you can do that. I'm just going to go over here and do post URL. What that would do now is when you click it, take you to the single product template if that was set up. What's really, really cool about this though is that if I now hit update, uh, you will have the wording up here that says save and close. It's slightly hidden by my screen. But once you hit save and close, okay, this is probably where, right, the example I just did with the font there was really rubbish. So let me just quickly edit my template. So I've decreased the size, changed the font to be white, changed the bottom margin as well. I'm going to go to advanced. I'm going to go to background. I'm going to give this a bit of a background color, but I'm going to make it slightly transparent like that. Okay, again, look, you know, this isn't the greatest style I'm doing here. I know that. I'm just trying to get across that you can be quite versatile. So I've got a bit of transparency going on there. Now I hit save and close, and now you're going to see what will be coming over. Of course, when you are building it, um, do check what it looks like in the tablet, the mobile, and any other breakpoint that you are worried about or you want to uh, show it in. But we now have uh, the start of a bespoke looking template here. And of course, you could put in a border, background colors, anything else you want to do. Now, when we click back over here so that we now 
back in the loop grid. We're not in the template now. We're not editing the template. You know, we haven't gone here and hit edit template. We're in the loop grid. You'll see here we now have the template, which is created. And that's what will happen is um, you'll get a template name. Um, you now have the option to set the column. So I could go with four. Again, look, it's going to look ridiculous because of the font size I picked for the price. But you can go with one or two, whatever you want to go with three. Currently, we got six items here. I'm going to actually leave this as six, but I am going to go to, uh, no, we won't leave it at six. We're going to show three like that. I'm going to go down here to pagination and I'm going to say, um, I don't know, give me previous and next. Because obviously I think there's about 20 odd items in here. And again, you can go to your style, um, sorry, the pagination, and you can adjust how that looks if you so want. Again, I've already gone over the query one down here where you can start to order things or set this for particular categories if you so want. But there is a feature here called masonry. The masonry here isn't really going to do anything for you whatsoever at the moment. But what I am going to do is I'm going to go over to the WordPress pennant. Let me just hit update and I'm going to modify how that image looks. So I am cropping this to be more like a portrait image like that. Let's just hit crop. Let's just hit save. Uh, that should have done. It has done. Now let me just get another image, which was I think with beanie with logo, which is this one. And again, I'm going to make it be portrait. I'm just going to scroll down because um, one of the problems that can occur is sometimes you have products and uh, they're not all the right same size, which is a pain. I strongly recommend you get consistency in how you build your websites, okay? But let's just hit crop. I mean, that's a rubbish. I haven't even cropped it properly, have I? Um, let me just crop that a bit more, something like that. Let's just crop it like that. Let's hit save. And this is what happens when you have lots of different sized images. This is not the best way to do it. Always go for consistency, but you've got two portrait and you've got a square. If we just make sure we are clicked on the loop grid, we're currently showing three columns uh, and three items. If I was to now change this to be masonry, nothing will happen because we're only seeing three items. But let me just go and increase this. I don't know. Let's just go in. Uh, if I just take away the number so we have a whole load of them coming through, now what you're going to start I mean bear in mind though it will depend on how many items we got but can you see how it is now filling in the gap be mindful of your images and how it looks you know I mean I'm just going to go in here now and change this to be uh, four again remember I haven't picked the right font size for the pricing so please ignore that but look can you now see we have a bit more of a masonry style going on um you can be quite inventive on how you make this look. And remember, if you do this as a template in the template builder, down here, you will have the option for display conditions. And you would then say, is this for the entire shop, particular categories, you know, however you want to do it. And if I just want to make another point, if I just go over here and I just set this to only be, say, three items, so it's just kind of shrunk down. If we just go down here again to the bottom, if I go and type in loop and we drop in a loop grid here, so a completely brand new one now, start to type in the word loop here because they all have the word loop in them. And now I could start to pick my templates. Uh, so this is where I've created some in the past with playing around or even the one above. In fact, the one above, if we just click on it, it was 8819. And if we go back down over here, if I was to even just type 8819, it will appear there it is. So I could pick, click that and I get my template back again. So you can very easily duplicate items. And if you don't, and if you kind of go, oh, but I want to mess around with it. Well, don't forget, you could just go over here to your, where are we? Elementor templates, <laughs> save templates, go over here, just click all uh, or just do a search for loop. And look, there it is, 8819, right? So you can now go and hit edit with Elementor in here as well and go and modify what your template basically looks like. I mean, it's going to look a little bit different here, but if I was to now go in um, and, uh, do you know what? Let's just pop in an icon, like, let's just pop an icon in there for no other good reason except it's an icon. I then update that, go back over to my products, and I'm just going to refresh the entire page in a very bad way because I haven't saved or updated or anything like that. But because I updated the template, it's now brought over the icon star. Or I could have done it here and it would have, do you get what I mean? But 
I hope this is useful for anyone who's thinking of playing around. I will say though, you know, um, Flexbox container and all of that, it is in beta. Things could change or not. Uh, just be careful how you build things. Uh, but this reduces the need for lots of other additional plugins. And you can go away and have fun with WooCommerce and Elementor and the Loop Builder. I'm Imran Web Squadron. Like, subscribe, share, and follow. I'll see you soon. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way, to win it life, I never miss that fact, taking big swings, bitch, hand me the back.